Dub end. This week, CW Sports Saturday kicks off with Wake Forest at NC State, followed by the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs and Colorado State on the road taking on Oregon State. Whoa! All on CW Sports Saturday. The action kicks off live this week at 12 Eastern, 9 Pacific on the CW. Hey, Chuck. Good to see you, buddy. Hey. <laughs> What's the occasion? Well, I'm hoping Anne Marie will be home soon, and I'm just hanging out with you guys until my woman gets back and I can blow you all off again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, Marie's going to need somebody else to do the cooking for a while, so I'm teaching Chuck some of your mom's secret family recipes. Secret recipes? What are you making? Uh, boiled weenies on white bread. And the secret is your mom didn't know how to cook. <laughs> Now at 10, the line fire flares up again, forcing new evacuation orders and warnings nearly a month after that fire started burning in the San Bernardino Mountains. We're live with the latest. And a tragedy in Simi Valley. A mother of five is stabbed to death by her boyfriend in front of her children. We have reaction from those close to the victim and the latest on the investigation. And actor and musician Chris Christofferson has died at the age of 88. How the award-winning entertainer's life and legacy will be remembered. Now, on the News at 10. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the News at 10. I'm Rick Chamber. And I'm Creed Winter. It has been more than three weeks since a line fire ignited. And tonight, a new evacuation order has been issued. Uh, right now, we're actually going to check those conditions along those fire lines. Let's start with Kai Goldberg. Hi, Kai. Hi, guys. Yeah, we want to take a look at some of the conditions outside tonight. It is a favorable night here in Southern California for firefighters as we're looking for light winds. As we do take you out towards that highland area, you can see we're looking at all the data, the information you need to know at about the top of your screen again, just up to the north of the highland area to the northeast. Good news temperature tonight in the low 70s, humidity values on the higher side, but still quite dry out there. 38% and this line fire has chewed up a great deal of terrain, over 40,000 acres. Fortunately, though, they're getting containment, but this once again just sparked off through the afternoon today. And because of that, not only are we seeing that wildfire danger and extremely tough terrain, but we're also looking at poor air quality. Got a lot of smoke throughout the Inland Empire up into the mountains tonight. We're gonna keep the air quality alert in place until we get to tomorrow evening at about five o'clock. But tomorrow, well, that's when we start to really see the heat moving into Southern California, a three day heat wave. We're going to call it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and you can see we've got the advisory board up on the screen for you. Excessive heat watches shaded in purple from Santa Barbara County, uh, the inland areas of the San Fernando Valley, Santa Clarita Valley. Daytime highs up to 106 for the next three afternoons. You can see much of the interior of Ventura County, the Santa Monica Mountains, also out towards the Inland Empire, the San Gabriel Valley. Daytime highs between 98 to 102 degrees so it's the fall season but it certainly will feel summer like over the next few days here in southern california but we'll have some relief that forecast in just a few minutes from now rick Crean, back to you Actor and country music singer-songwriter Chris Christofferson has died at the age of 88. His family says that he passed away at his Maui home, surrounded by loved ones. No cause of death has been given yet, but his family put out a statement saying that we're all so blessed for our time with him. Christofferson rose to fame with hits like Me and Bobby McGee, but also starring in iconic films, including A Star is Born with Barbara Streisand. Coming up in our next half hour, we'll take a look back at his life and his career. And some tragic news tonight in Simi Valley. That's where a mother of five is brutally stabbed to death by her boyfriend. And sadder still, her children witnessed that attack. Rachel Menatoff joining us live in Simi Valley tonight, where she spoke with some of those grieving family members. Rachel. Rick, Kareen, good evening to you both. This is a story that has touched so many people because they either know someone who has been the victim of domestic violence or they themselves have been victimized. Jessica Tinoco was a loving mother and devoted her life to her kids. Unfortunately, there was no indication that she was in a dangerous situation until it was too late. I love my baby's mom, you know, and she was a good mom. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> she's always been there for my kids, you know? She's always took care of my daughters. She was such a beautiful person. So loving anyone she came across. She was willing to help them if they needed help. You know, she always said how proud she was of me and how much she, how happy she was to see me grow up and how much she looked at me like a little sister. The abundance of love and adoration felt for Jessica Tinoco in her short but impactful 34 years of life is evident when you talk to her cousins, her aunt, and her dearest friends. Motherhood was her passion, her creativity and spunk seen in and around her Simi Valley home currently covered in Halloween decorations. She loved her kids. She loved kids in general. All the friends, kids, all the cousins. Like, you'll find her at a party. We're all over here. She's in the Jolly Jumper with the kids. Like, she was a kid person. Alicia Alonzo grew up with Tinoco from elementary school on. She says her best girlfriend had been dating her boyfriend, Raymond Rivas, for about nine months. They likely crossed paths during their high school years in Oxnard and reconnected years later. There were no obvious signs that she was in trouble. I didn't know he it was at this level. And that's the thing. You just never know what's going on behind a closed door. On Friday night, everything changed. The Simi Valley Police Department says it got a call from Tinoco's daughter saying her mother was being stabbed by her live-in boyfriend. When authorities got to the family's home, they found a most brutal scene. Jessica stabbed in the face, neck, and abdomen in front of her young children. And my heart goes out for my nieces and my nephew. They don't deserve this. They don't deserve and no child deserves to go through something like this. Jessica was a Tia herself. Her nephew, Nimaya, speaking through tears, says she made him feel seen and special. She would always take us on occasions and stuff. She would always be happy to see me or anyone else. She was the best Tia. Revis was arrested here at the couple's home in Simi Valley. Soon after the attack, he's being held on suspicion of murder. We do want to remind anyone who might be in need of help or resources, you can always call the National Domestic Violence Hotline. We have the phone number on the bottom of the screen. Reporting live in Simi Valley, I'm Rachel Menatoff. I'll send it back to both of you in studio. All right, Rachel, we appreciate that. We want to go back and talk a little bit about the line fire because it's been three weeks since it ignited, but tonight a new evacuation order has been issued and others are under evacuation warnings. KTLA's Carlos Sacedo joins us live from Highland with the very latest. Carlos, what's it like on the ground tonight? We're at Kareen Highway 330 behind me is closed in both directions as officials try to gain a handle on this stubborn fire. As you mentioned, things blew up late this afternoon, forcing several evacuations. Evacuation of this area is required. Esta área debe ser evacuada de emergencia. There you can hear deputies with the San Bernardino County Sheriff going around telling residents they need to evacuate as a line fire reignited Sunday afternoon. An evacuation warning is in place for the Boulder Bay area of Big Bear from the dam east to Wild Rose Lane. A mandatory evacuation order is in place for the community of Seven Oaks, while an evacuation warning has been issued for the community of Angeles Oaks. Residents who require additional time to evacuate were told to leave immediately, especially the elderly and those with pets and livestock. Now here's a different view of the flare up on the Big Bear Lake Cam. Fallsville School in Forest Falls will be closed Monday. As a result, the line fire has torched more than 40,000 acres since igniting at the beginning of this month, destroying several structures and injuring four people. The line fire is believed to have been intentionally set on September 5th.